Hi guys, so in this video we're going to look at the coefficient of determination which is R squared and essentially what it does, well it's similar to the R value or Pearson's product moment correlation that you might remember from um, linear regression. It essentially tells us how well a graph or a curve fits to a set of data. And a bit like the R value, the closer to one it is, the um, the closer the fit. Unlike the R value, because it's R squared, it has to be positive. So you're not going to have a negative number. It's going to be between zero and one. And actually, the I mean, the square root of this is R, and that'll give you the R value that you are familiar with with um, from um, linear regression. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you how to do this fairly easily and with the calculator. And then I'm going to show you how we actually find the R squared value using um, this formula here. Now this formula is not in the formula book that you actually don't need to know. Um, you don't need to know how to do what I'm about to show you in an exam. However, well, the bit the bit that I'm about to show you that's not using the calculator. Yes, you do need to you know how to do it using your calculator, but it is definitely useful to to know how to do it for your IA. But in general, to understand why this is even a thing, I think it's uh, it's worth going through it in full. So let's get cracking. So it says here's some data. I haven't gone to much effort in a real life example. I've just given us an x value and a y value, and I want us to find a quadratic regression curve and the coefficient of determination for this curve. So here's my data. I have um, I've already put in the data. I've called this x and I've called this y. Now what I can do is I can go press um, menu statistics stack calculations quadratic regression the x list is x the y list is y keep all this the same press ok and i get this so i get a b and c that's my ax squared plus bx plus c and then i get the r squared value here which is 0 0.957 etc so these values guys well they're here, A, B, and C. If you want to see what the full value is, it's it's there, right? I always recommend six. Put six significant figures, um, and then you can you can round it at the end if 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 you want to, or if you need to. So, um, okay. So the quadratic regression curve is y equals, and we're just going to put in A. So zero point six seven eight. Five seven zero point six seven eight five seven. I did say six significant figures. Um, one x squared plus, although I think it's minus, so it's minus eight point two. So it's actually I'm gonna, I can actually just put eight point two there because it's minus eight point one nine 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 nine. So I'll just put minus eight point two x. And then finally, plus 32.4, and that's a similar situation. It's actually almost, it's probably probably not exactly 32.4, but it's cl it's so close that that's what they've given. So that is my regression curve, my quadratic. It's the quadratic that best fits the data, and I'll show you what it actually, well, I'll show you what it looks like now. Because here, once I'm here, I can go, um, well, Let's let's write down the R squared value actually first while I'm here. R squared equals so R squared equals zero point nine five seven four three eight. Zero point nine five seven four three eight. Perhaps you might want to go to three significant figures. Zero point nine five seven. Now it's nice to keep this one like to more than three significant figures because you might want to use this if you're going to use this to uh, make a prediction or something then you don't want to use the rounded value anyway i'm going to show you on the calculator here if i go document insert data and statistics and in here i'm going to put my x and in here i'm going to put my y so this is my and you can actually see it does look a bit like a quadratic and then i'm going to go menu analyze regression show 
quadratic and that's the quadratic so it's the a bit like the line of best fit this is the quadratic of best fit the quadratic that minimizes these um these residuals that I'm going to talk about in a second but it's like your best fit okay so that's it that's kind of basically all you need to know how to do for an exam with the calculator easy fairly straightforward but this now I'm going to go into a bit more detail and explain what it means where it comes from and how we can calculate it so I have gone to some effort and prepared this earlier so this is my these are the points my x is my y um, there's my 220 there's my 49 etc this is the curve that we just found the 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 quadratic of best fit this is so my my function is the quadratic this is f of 2 f of 4 f of 6 f of 8 f of 10 and f of 12 f of 12 for example f of 12 is 31.7 which is here it's where the graph where is the graph at 12 so at 12 it's there which is 31.7 etc okay this thing then is y minus the this is y minus um, f of x squared so if we remember what we had is what we we're trying to do is minimize these so these are what we call the residuals. This is like the the error in the graph. So it doesn't fit perfectly. There is this there's a bit of there's a bit of an error between each point and the curve. And what we do is we subtract it. We su we do y minus f of x so we get that distance and we square it because otherwise you're going to have some positive and some negative values and, and they're all going to cancel and it won't make sense so we square it and this is what we call this uh, the um, residual sum of squares or the sum of square residuals and it's and it's this so this is actually here this is s s res for sum of squares of residuals and it's when we add up all the squares of the residuals that's what that is and that's what that is that this part of the formula um, as I say I'm going to get to exactly what this means next part is y minus the mean squared and we're going to sum it up now you might remember this as the variance so this is actually the the variance of the y values and what it means is if I draw so this is the mean 16.1667 so somewhere somewhere here close to 16 let me just draw this here okay so this is a straight line across this is the mean line 16.1667 what these values give us is this distance the distance between um, the distance between the point and the mean and we're going to sum them all up now clearly this is going to be when we when we square them and add them up we get the variance this is the variance and clearly it's going to be bigger than it's going to be bigger than the residual sum of squares but and this is called this is called the total sum of squares hence s s t o t for total the total sum of squares it is the well, it is the variance. You can see it. it. It is the sum of the squares of the distance of each point from the mean. Now, what does that all mean and why are we doing 1 minus this? Well, essentially, what we're saying is this is the variance. It is how much the y values are varying from the mean, if you like. So it's, it tells us the variation of the y values. So what we want to know is, well, we're saying, right, the y values are, are varying, they're changing, but why is that and how, how much is it to do with this curve? So we're saying how much of the variation is accounted for by the curve? Now, what we can say is 
Well, we don't know we we don't know yet exactly how much of the variation is accounted for by the curve, but we do know how much of the variation is not accounted for by the curve because we know that there's a small amount of variation here, which is the residual sum of squares. We know like this little bit of variation is not this bit and this bit and this bit. This is not accounted for by the curve and here, etc. So all these little bits, this is like the error. So what we actually do is we say, well, okay, what percentage of the total sum of squares is this residual sum of squares? And we say, well, it's 17, um, 17 point, and let me do it over here. We say 17.4857 over 410.833. And this is equal to, let me get out my calculator, this is equal to 17.4857 divided by 410.833, and I get 0 0.04256158, 0.04256158. What did I say? Zero four two five six one five eight five six one five eight, which is obviously um four percent if you like. So we can say about four percent of this variation, four percent of this variation is um not accounted for by the model because this is the error that we're saying is not accounted for by the model. So about 4% is not accounted for by the model. So how much is accounted for by, by the model? Well, that's where this formula comes into play. We can say R squared is equal to one minus this, minus 0 0.4256158, which is, I'm gonna do a cheeky trick here, guys, and just do um, answer minus one. Obviously, it's negative, but it's one minus this I want to do. So it's the positive version of this. So 0 0.9574380. 0 0.95743. Let me just put down 42 as well. 42. And this gives us, which is approximately equal to 0 0.95. Seven. This gives us the R squared value, and it's the per it's you can think of it as the percentage of this variation that is accounted for by the model. Let's go and have a look at our our um. Let us look at our R value. What was it? If we can remember, zero point nine five seven four three. 0 0.95743 so it's pretty much bang on i did a little bit of rounding like throughout this here so it's not going to be absolutely perfect but it's certainly to well it's correct to like five decimal places so that's pretty good okay that's it guys look obviously as i said in an exam they're not going to ask you to do out all of this but i think it's definitely helpful to understand where it comes from what what it means why r squared is even a thing um and it obviously works for for straight lines as well. The main main thing that you need to know though is definitely how to just find this with the calculator, which I think is straightforward. Okay, hopefully that's all good guys, makes sense. If not, let me know and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.